sometimes, especially recently, seems like there is no end to human suffering. Some of it is caused by nature, such as a virus. Some of it is harm people inflict on each other, such as brutality and dehumanization. On top of all this collective trauma we are experiencing, some of us are still going through our personal challenges, health problems, financial difficulties, car accidents, loss of loved ones. We as you use, dare I say, by definition, tend to take the weight of the world and put it on our own shoulders. Our heart bleeds for people we have never met. Injustice anywhere becomes our, so our sole responsibility. How do we cope with that burden? How do we not wilt? How do we not despair, lose hope, or become cynical? Well, today, I wanted to talk to you about one of the ways to invigorate your soul, play. Now, decades of research showed that play is critical in intellectual, physical, emotional, and social development at all ages. I know some of you might ask, like I did, how do I dare seek enjoyment while the world aches? Well, I anticipated that question, so I brought in reinforcements. Nobel Peace Prize laureates, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu have endured decades of exile and soul-crushing violence of oppression in their respective countries and communities. Yet, they remain the two most joyful people on the planet. In his book, The Book of Joy, Douglas Abrams documents their conversations over the course of the week, and he notices that most of the time, the two of them are goofing around and laughing. There are a couple of stories that are being told about them. For example, when they were about to go on stage and the Dalai Lama was still being silly, Desmond Tutu turned to him and said, the cameras are on, act like a holy man. Another time, when the Archbishop was about to visit an eye-popping mansion in Las Vegas. Everybody was nervous to see how he would react to such lavish surroundings. He walked in, looked around, and declared, I was wrong. I do want to be rich. Abrams writes, sometimes these two seem more of a comedic duo as much as the two venerable spiritual leaders. Just the pain exists in the world doesn't mean all joy can be overlooked. We started out playing quite naturally. When we were children, the spontaneous activity of unstructured play, when we make up our own games and we make up our own rules and we're not afraid of being silly, of looking silly, was part of our daily life. The importance of childhood play memories was highlighted to me by another spiritual source, Disney. The movie Inside Out captures human psyche by making girls' main character, uh, by making girls' emotions fear, disgust, joy, sadness, main characters. It also depicts five personality islands that are built out of her core childhood memories. Five. There is a family island. There is a friendship island. Honesty island. There is a hockey island because it's a big part of her life. 
and there is a goofball island. Silliness gets its own island in our personalities. Of course, our best memories are connected to the play. And those who played with us warm our heart long after they're gone. I have to tell you a little bit about my family. My parents came to Moscow, Russia in early 1960s as students from a city in Uzbekistan called Samarkand. Now their parents and grandparents came to Samarkand seeking better life at some point a hundred years ago from places such as Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Tatarstan. I hope you're writing this down. There will be a geography quiz, quiz later on. So although I grew up in Moscow, I spent most of my childhood summers in Samarkand visiting my grandparents. It was a, about a four hour flight. Samarkand is a beautiful ancient city in Central Asia with numerous madrasas and mosques and minarets and mausoleums. It gets very hot in the summer, like today in the sanctuary. <laughs> so a lot of people have pergolas over their yards that are holding grapevines for the shade. But it wasn't eating the grapes off the vine or eating the cherries off the tree by the bucket that holds my most precious memories. I remember Valeric. Now Valeric was my father's younger, much younger brother. He lived with his parents even after he got married, as many people in Asia do. So I got to spend time with him every time I visited them and some of the times he visited us in Moscow. You see, Valeric was a very talented piano player. He was one of those people who could play the uh, instrument, the song they've never heard after you hum a few bars to them. And he would play and I would sing. And he would play and I would dance. And our time together was spent on these makeup shows. We would rehearse a few numbers and put up a show for the rest of the family. Now, he was not just my favorite. He was his mother's favorite. He was everybody's favorite. My mother, often tired and exhausted and overworked, who barely smiled during my childhood, would laugh and clap when Valeric was around. There is a picture from the late 70s, I hope you can see it, that depicts me dressed in every scarf my mother owns at the time, and Valeric having a folk Armenian outfit that we borrowed from my brother, and a silly hat, and we're about to put on a show for the family. Now, my father, who is also a creator of my goofball island, would have to make up a huge introduction for us. And now, the people's artists of the Soviet Union, Anna and Valery Arustamo. And there we went. I was just thinking, Valery would be 70 this year. Ah, except as so many brilliant artists, he left us early. He died at a young age to the greatest grief of his family. But his smile and his music and the way we played together are the best childhood memories I cherish. Now I try to fill my children's goofball island. I didn't do it enough with my daughter Victoria because it was my turn to be overtired and exhausted and overworked mother. But I'm, and I was single mother, but now I'm making an extra effort with my eight-year-old Sasha. Now Sasha has his own imaginative play. He's not a crazy dancer. He is a um, stormtrooper or clone trooper or shock trooper 
from the Star Wars and can never get them straight. Over the last three months, every time we went to on a hike just to get out of the house, it was never a hike. It would be a secret mission to an unknown planet of Adams Point, urban forestry center, uh, Wagon, Wagon Hill Farm. Since we don't allow guns in the house, Sasha would have to get creative arming himself with wooden daggers and plastic bow and arrow, and sometimes even a hose nozzle. <laughs> and everybody we would meet on the hike would have to pass a test. The password is hello. If they say it back to us, then the they are on our side. If they don't, we would have to report them to the command center immediately through our special radio equipment located in our secret invisible helmets. Bang. Sasha would stay in character for hours. At first, my husband Stephen and I were reluctant to participate in this silliness for that long, but then we realized that those characters provided such a needed mental break from often harsh reality. So if you have kids around, take a cue from them, play with them. Even if you don't have kids around, you have to make play a bigger part of your life. How do you do it? Well, I have a story for that too. About five years ago, um, while well, reeling, still reeling from the sudden death of my best friend, I went to a grief workshop at Kripalu Yoga Center in the Berkshires. And one of the questions that was asked of us that I would like you to probably answer at some point is what can you do on a daily basis to make your life 5% more authentic. Now you have to understand by then I've been in the United States for more than 20 years. I was an American MBA. I was a corporate CPA. I spent my time heading up the internal audit department of a multi-million dollar corporation. I made presentations to the board of directors. I dealt with the Wall Street bankers. I was a middle-aged mother of two driving a Lexus. But that question brought me back to my childhood and to the unbridled joy I felt performing with Valeric. So for me, the answer was dancing. You see, movement is basic play. It lights up our brain. It fosters learning. It makes us more adaptable. It makes us more resilient. So when you're feeling like you're going through a hard time, just move your body. Stand or hop on one foot. Go for a brisk walk. Skip. Or just dance. So that year, I quit my corporate job and I got trained to be a Zumba instructor. Zumba is a dance fitness program based on Latin music. I didn't make it my career. I didn't need to. I'm still involved in my profession of accounting, now only from the academic perspective. But it allowed me to make dancing a bigger part of my life. When we moved to Portsmouth three years ago, I offered to teach Zumba at the Portsmouth Senior Center, and I've been doing it ever since, several times a week. Over the last three months, because we couldn't leave our homes, we made the classes virtual and we made them daily so we could see each other and we could move together more often. This allows me to combine my love of dance and my desire to serve the community. And I'm honoring my seven-year-old self and my Valeric in the process. Now, my students, whose ages go from 55 to 92, 
They know grief. They know loss. Over the years, I have watched some of them lose their partners, lose their siblings, lose their dear friends, and some, like my grandmother, lose their children. We cry together, we hold each other, and then we dance. Yet they dance. Now you don't have to play all the time to feel fulfilled. In fact, play is just the catalyst. Getting just a little bit of true play makes positive effect throughout your life. It makes you more productive and happier in everything you do. After spending a week with the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Tutu, Abrams wrote, I often felt like for these two men, Holiness and lightheartedness were indivisible. So my hope for you is to discover or rediscover that thing that invigorates your soul, that makes your heart light, and make it a bigger part of your life. May it be so. May you be peaceful. May you know joy. And don't forget to visit your goofball island once in a while.